Solenoids are high speed, heavy duty, and in line mounted. All valves may be used as normally open or normally closed and can be mounted in any position. If a fail maintain position is required, contact the GNB sales office in your area or call the factory directly. Features All GNB solenoid valves are equipped with DIN plug electrical connections for easy electrical hookup. Be sure to disconnect all electrical supply to the solenoid before beginning any maintenance exercise on your GNB vacuum valve. It is important to note that the solenoids have a manual override which will allow maintenance personnel to actuate the vacuum valve without electricity. However, air supply to the cylinder is necessary. The manual override screw is located on the solenoid body near the DIN plug connector. By turning the screw clockwise or counterclockwise, the valve can be opened or closed. Flow controls to adjust the opening and the closing speed of the valves are located on the exhaust ports of the solenoid. The variable orifice in the flow control will allow infinite adjustment until fully open or fully closed. The actuation speed of the valves is set at the factory and should not require additional adjustment. Consult your operation and maintenance manual for the factory set speed. This can usually be found on the certification test sheet enclosed in your manual. Operating your valve at too great a speed will result in damage to the internal valve mechanisms and possibly to the valve body. Damages resulting from incorrectly adjusted flow controls will void the warranty. Major components of the GNB vacuum valve. Valve body is the vacuum envelope containing the internal components. Maintaining the body and the critical seal interface areas in good condition and preventing scratches on the surface of the seal will ensure a proper seal when the valve is installed on your equipment. Air cylinder. The air cylinder is the driving force for the valve. The cylinder housing must remain free from dents. Any deformation to the air cylinder housing will cause the cylinder to malfunction. The air cylinder shaft must remain free from scratches. The shaft is a ground and polished surface. The seals within the cylinder and the seal in the seal block assembly can be effective only if the shaft is maintained in good condition. The shaft must never be allowed to be bent. A bent shaft will prevent the cylinder from fully extending or retracting. The cylinder stroke should be long enough to push the carriage against the stop blocks. The stop blocks stop the forward motion of the carriage. If the stop blocks adjustment is too long, the links will be behind center. If the adjustment is too short, the links will be beyond center. The positioning of the link relative to the stop blocks is critical to the locking feature of the GNB valve. Links. The key feature of the GNB valves is that the GNB valve will seal against atmosphere in either direction. The links position is critical to assure the proper force is transmitted to the gate seal O-ring. The forward motion of the carriage should permit the links to stop and lock at approximately two degrees over center. If the links are too far forward or over center or too far behind the center, the valve will not seal. Center gate wheel. The center gate wheel is attached to the gate plate or gate frame. The wheel will come to rest directly over the wheel slot. In some valves, there is a pocket which is machined into the body flange. In some models, the gate wheel may ride on rails. In that case, the gate wheel will rest in the gap between the rails. In either case, the wheel pocket or rail gap will be located directly on the horizontal center line of the flange diameter. The center gate wheel allows the gate to drop into position to seat the gate O-ring. Front stop wheel. A relationship exists between the front stop wheel and the center gate wheel. The front stop wheel should contact the valve body end plate at the same time the center gate wheel drops into its respective slot, wheel pocket or rail gap, as previously mentioned. If both the stop wheels and the center gate wheel are not in unison, 
the gate will either slide forward or the center gate wheel will bind on the edge of the wheel slot. Tightening bolt. Tightening bolts fasten the gate frame to the gate plate. The tightening bolts secure the gate plate into its final adjusted position. Jack screws. The jack screws push the gate plate into the polished sealing surface on the interior of the body flange. The jack screws position the gate plate to accept the locking force which compresses the gate seal O-ring. Actual gate adjustment. GNB designs valves which are field adjustable. The gate adjustment procedure may be conducted with the valve in any position. Always remember to guard against accidental valve actuation to prevent injury. Be sure that the gate seal O-ring is not damaged or dirty. Inspect the gate seal polished surface for scratches, damage, and dirt. The gate seal O-ring should have a very light coat of process compatible vacuum grease. To begin the adjustment process, follow these easy steps. Actuate the valve into the closed position. Disconnect electrical power from the solenoid. Maintain air pressure into the solenoid. Inspect the gate position to confirm that the stop wheels and center gate wheel are properly located. In a systemic approach, loosen all the jack screws. Next, loosen all the tightening bolt. the same systemic sequence, begin to tighten the jack screws until they contact the gate plate. After the jack screws contact the gate plate, tighten the jack screws one full turn more, one half turn more. Be sure to keep the tightening pressure as uniform as possible. In sequence, begin to tighten the tightening bolts. Prior to applying the final torque on the tightening bolts, you may check the uniformity of the gate adjustment by measuring the gap between the gate plate face and the body flange with a feeler gauge. Measurements should be taken around the circumference of the gate plate and recorded. This will give the maintenance technician a basis for further adjustment if required. An acceptable deviation in the measurements for a valve of 36 inches to 52 inches, 10 thousandths of an inch to 15 thousandths of an inch. Complete the adjustment process by final torquing the tightening bolt securely with an additional one quarter to one half turn. Upon completion of the primary adjustment, a mass spectrometer helium leak test should be performed to ensure the gate O-ring seals properly. If a leak is detected, 
An additional one-quarter turn on the jacking screws may be required.